Good morning. Welcome to the Monox Event webinar series. My name is Emily Adams. I'm the Business Development Manager at Monox Event. Today's presentation will focus on Monox Event's fiberglass takeoff and terminology. Our presenter is Brian Phipps. He is an engineer at Monox Event and has been with the company since 2012. Brian has an engineering degree from Iowa State. Sam Stelzner, also an engineer from Iowa State, is assisting with today's presentation. A bit of housekeeping for today's webinar. In the lower left corner of your screen, we are encouraging participants to text questions to us. We'll read back the questions and answer throughout the presentation in an effort to encourage dialogue throughout. Monoxavent's FRP product products include underduct and corrosion composites. Complete product info is online at www.fiberglass-duct.com. Without further ado, we will turn over the presentation to Brian. Thank you, Emily, and good morning, everyone. Very thankful that you could take the time to join with us this morning. And in an effort to take valuable use of that time, we'll go ahead and get right into it. A little bit of overview today. We're going to start off talking about fiberglass fitting terminology. Uh, then we're going to get into quoting, how we quote parts and pieces lists uh, versus having actual sketches or contract documents that we can quote from. We're going to touch up a little bit on the software that we use for takeoff and drawing and how we go through that process. And then we're going to discuss manifolding or factory assembly. We'll have freight estimates. And then we'll see at the end a sample quote that shows how everything we've done comes into one place together. First, let's start off with some of our corrosion composites elbows. One of the first things you'll notice here is that we have both sweep and gourd elbows. The sweep elbows that you see at the top are standard for our corrosion projects, which would be for hazardous chemical fume exhaust, say at a water treatment plant, a wastewater treatment plant, a chemical plant. And anything that is 24 inch in diameter or smaller is going to be one of these smooth radius elbows that you see before you. Now, before I go too much further with the elbows, note that the center line radius on all of our elbows is one and a half times the diameter. That's our standard. If we need to make an elbow that's a larger sweep, we need to want to make one that's a smaller sweep, we can do that. But just so you're aware again, a one and a half time center line radius or a one time throat radius is standardly what you're going to get. Now, if we get into elbows that are larger than 24 inch in diameter, we'll have a three gore elbow, such as this 45, or we'll have a five gore elbow, such as the 90. Once again, center line radius one and a half times with these as well. But if we need to make an elbow that's a tighter drop, we can reduce the number of gores, uh, make it a sharp angle. Uh, if it's rectangular, we can certainly put turning veins in there to, to help out with airflow. We're just touching on what a standard elbow is today. Now, when we change into underduct elbows, and that's underduct is our standard HVAC direct burial duct work, you see that the 45 degree elbows are now all two gore and the 90 degree elbows are all three gore, regardless of size. So because of the properties of the different resins we use for the low smoke and low flame of HVAC ductwork, these underduct elbows have fewer gores than the corrosion composites elbows. Over here on the right, we see one of our standard duct flanges. Now all the dimensions from our duct flanges are gonna come from this table right here. This is the PS standard 15-69 table number two. Most of these flanges are going to be two inches across the face from inside to outside and be anywhere from an eighth inch to roughly three eighths thick, depending on the size of the flange. Now, just because that's a standard flange doesn't mean we can't get into custom ones. Some projects need to tie into pipe flanges or 150 PSI flanges necessary. Now, keep in mind, this is a larger flange face. It's a thicker flange. It has a different bolt circle and it has larger bolts in it to deal with the higher pressures. So if your customer does need to attach to a pipe flange, please let us know in advance so we make sure to ship the right thing out to the field. Otherwise, all of our flanges are going to follow this table on the left, PS 1569, table two. One last note on the flanges before we move on, they're all provided undrilled, unless we're connecting to our own equipment. So if we're providing a flange damper connection, or we're flanging a particular joint of our own making, then we will drill it in-house. 
Otherwise, it's a very easy thing to clamp and drill in the field to match another equipment's flange and ensures that there's enough wiggle room for the contractor to get it fit properly the right time. Here we have some T's, laterals. Those are very similar to how standard PVC pipe fittings would be. Same thing with concentric and eccentric reducers. Now, one thing I'd like to point out about our reducers, you can see here that on either end, there's six inches of straight. And that's very typical for all of our loose fiberglass fittings. This allows the contractor or customer uh, a straight piece of duct to wrap the wet layup joints around in the field. Otherwise, if it was uh, you know, directly on a slope surface, it can be a little bit more difficult to roll the air bubbles out. I mean, it's certainly possible, but we want to do things in such a way that eases the installation and improves the quality. There's a little formula here that will tell you the standard length of our flanges, or I'm sorry, of our reducers if you're interested. That being said, if we need to make it a little shorter, a little longer, again, customization is the name of our game. Feel free to ask us if you need a specific reducer that's not quite eccentric or concentric, maybe it's partway in between. We can custom manufacture just about anything. Moving on to the end caps, you'll notice that the end cap also has a six inch piece of straight to it. Same reason for the reducers. We don't want to give the customer something in the field that's a bit of a bear or a hassle to have to lay up around corners. So we've given them something that they can just wrap directly around one round edge of it and attach it to the end of their duct run. Same principle with the 90 degree saddle tap and the 45 degree saddle tap. We're providing it with a one inch flange around the outside in order to ease the installation of these things in the field. Now let's get into a little bit of takeoff. Uh, here we have a typical parts list from a project we got about a year and a half ago. Uh, I have 30 feet of six inch round duct. I have 12 feet of eight inch round duct, uh, so on and so forth. Now the way I'm gonna quote this is in 10 foot sticks. We fabricate all of our fiberglass on pre-manufactured mandrels that are in 10 foot lengths. So the customer will be getting three 10 foot lengths of the six inch round duct, one 10 foot length of the eight inch round duct, and one two foot length of the eight inch round duct, and so on and so forth. The elbows, the reducers, the plugs or end caps will be provided separately. Now let's say this project equaled X dollars. We're not gonna throw a real dollar amount at it, but keep, uh, keep the number X in mind, or the letter I should say. So we got a purchase order for this project. Contractor's ready to move forward. So he provided us a basic bar napkin sketch of it. Now, the first thing we want to point out is our price has increased 23%. I'll say that one more time. It increased 23%. 23% more material cost that the customer was not expecting when they put their bid in. And a lot of that has to do with, well, I don't have you know, I have an eight foot piece here. I don't have a 10 foot piece. I have a six foot piece. And it also includes the field joint material and shop joint material. If we back up one more slide, we'll see that one of the important things missing from this parts and pieces list is field joint material. Just because I'm providing three 10 foot lengths of six inch round duct doesn't mean that's how the customer intends to install it. Perhaps what he really needs is five six foot lengths of duct, which is going to increase the number of field joints that he has to do. So in a case like this, we'll typically break out the field joints and say each six inch round field joint will cost this much money, each eight inch round field joint will cost this much money, et cetera. If we have plans such as this, we can calculate in our factory assembly or the shop joints that we do in the factory versus the field joints that the customer will have to do and be able to give you this project in a lump sum. Let's move on to a second parts list. We're going to call this job Y, which is for Y dollars. We see 26 inch, 10 feet of that, 24 inch, 40 feet. See some Y branches, some elbows. And here, the customer has indicated the number of field joints and the sizes they need. One thing to note on this says also order one can of putty. I'm not entirely sure how much a can is. It could be a coffee can, it could be a pop can, it could be a gallon, it could be a quart, it could be a pound, it could be anything. We got a purchase order for this project as well. And then, excuse me, 
and then we got the contract documents for it. So we were able to calculate out the number of field joints and shop joints and how we would factory assemble it. 10%. 10% decrease. Not an increase in this case, an actual decrease from what the customer had on a parts and pieces list. We'll put these two side by side. One increased over 20%, one decreased by 10%. Now, I'm not putting these numbers in front of you to scare you or anything. I'm not trying to say that we absolutely have to have drawings every time. Sometimes there are cases where drawings are just not readily available. But if we have drawings and specifications along with them, even if it's like this, a bar napkin sketch can do wonders for us quoting you a project, being able to bring our margins down, increasing the factor of safety with the pricing, and make sure that a customer gets the right price for the job up front and not at a later date. When we do have contract documents, we use on-screen takeoff as our primary takeoff software. Here you can see an underground run here as well as one along here. And we've indicated with blue marks where the shop joints are, which are again the same thing as a field joint, but it's something we are completing in-house before the project arrives on site and the red field joints that the customer will complete in the field. Once we've taken our quantities from on-screen takeoff, we plug it into an Excel sheet. As you can see here, two gore elbows, three gore elbows, five gore elbows. Now, I'd like to point out here, again with the elbows, you'll see that nothing says 45, nothing says 90, because to us, the cost of the elbow is more about the material and labor put into it than the actual angle it does. So typically, any elbow that's larger than 45 degrees, but 90 and shorter, will be a three gore elbow in underduct or a five gore elbow in the corrosion. That also being said, anything 45 degrees or less will still be a two gore elbow for the underduct or three for corrosion. Here we have our field joint spreadsheet. This helps us determine how many pounds and feet of glass, resin, catalyst, etc., will be needed for the project and breaks out how many joints there are of each size and how much material each joint should take up. Now, this is something that we provide uh, on our website in the instructions, directs how many of what kind of layer go on each joint and also the directions that are provided with the project when it ships to the site. One important note on this, it's a little bit small, I apologize, but extra material 20%. We always calculate exactly what we would need to do the job if everything went perfectly, and then throw in an extra 20% field joint material. Of course, there's no such thing as a perfect job, and you know we don't want a customer caught in a bind if a little bit of resin gets, uh, gets lost, or, or if it gets spilled, or some of the glass gets damaged. So we provide that as a nice extra factor of safety. Once we get into the drawing phase, we can start piecing things together such as this. This is where we get into our factory assembly and determining how we're going to ship the product to the site instead of loose pieces. So here I have a 16 inch length, the reducer that comes down to 10 inches, 10 inch length elbow, and a couple of saddle taps. So if I'm providing this in loose parts and pieces, the customer is going to get this 16 inch chunk, it's going to come with this reducer, straight length, the elbow, and these two saddle tabs. In fact, the customer is going to have to cut the holes in the side of the 16 link and uh, mount the saddle tabs to that. So we count the field joints. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the end here makes seven field joints, including two holes that the customer is doing in the field. Now this piece as we see it is actually how we shipped it for this project. This is the factory assembled piece. So all of the red joints you see here including these two holes, the customer doesn't have to worry about that. We've taken care of it in-house. So we've gone from seven field joints down to two. And we've eliminated two holes that the contractor has to cut in the field. All they have to do is, uh, if it's small enough, use a couple of guys to place in the trench or use a lull, drop her in, wrap the two ends of it to the next conjoining duct, and you're done. Here we see an example of some of the 3D drawings we provide, laying them out on the contract documents, trying to get them as accurate as possible. Because we provide the field joint, I'm sorry, because we provide the factory assembly or manifolding, 
these drawings become very, very important for the customer to help us out by verifying every dimension on it. Especially with a document like this, we can't be 100% certain what these risers are going to be. That will be up to our customer to let us know how long they would like these lengths so that all these little taps can be provided and located in our shop and ship with all of them already on there and all the customer would have to do is put one joint for each of these taps. So coming back to the shop drawings again, before we can start shop drawings, we must have a purchase order. No extra parts are shipped or stocked. Again, emphasizing the importance of field measure and verifying every dimension. Because every fiberglass job we do is completely custom with the factory assembly, we, we can't stock these manifolded pieces, which means if you know on site that you are short a couple of 45 degree elbows or uh, you have too many or you got the wrong one, letting us know as soon as possible can help us slide that into production, get something fabricated for you, and get it shipped out as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, if you were to call me at 4.30, on a Thursday evening and say, can you overnight a couple of elbows? I need them tomorrow morning. Again, it's not something sitting on our shelf. We'll have to fabricate it. And production cannot begin without signed and verified drawings. This again comes back to the factory assembly because we're guessing about a lot of field conditions off of contract documents that can often not have all the details there. We really appreciate the contractor coming back field measuring, making sure all the risers are correct, making sure the lengths are correct, and looking at where we're placing the field joints on these so he gets a good idea of what pieces are going to show up on that truck when it ships out. Let's touch a little bit on freight estimates. We have enclosed trailer versus flatbed. Now an enclosed trailer is cheaper than a flatbed and typically more readily available. So it's our go-to thing. On top of that, we can usually get about two to three times as much ductwork into an enclosed trailer as we can a flatbed. This is because fiberglass is very lightweight and very strong. It enables us to stack the ductwork inside of an enclosed trailer without worrying about damaging the product. Hazardous material or hazmat. The resin and catalysts that are shipped with the field joints qualify to the DOT as a hazardous material. Now, what this means with rush shipping is that one, it cannot be sent by postal service, it cannot be sent by UPS, it cannot be sent by FedEx, it typically can't be overnighted. It has to go standard freight when it has that field joint material. This is again something to keep in mind that if you know you're running low on the field joint material while working on the project, please let us know sooner rather than later. We don't want to have to put a kit together and then put it on a truck and say, we're really sorry, but it's going to take, you know, two or three or maybe even four days for the truck to get there, depending on, uh, you know, the, the weather or how far the truck has to go, because we can't throw it on a plane and ship it out overnight. Freight aging is the last thing we'd like to touch on for the freight estimates. I'm sure all of you know that fuel prices were one thing when you drove into work today, and they'll be something completely different when you drive home. Shipping these things via truck is no different. And straight from the horse's mouth, C.H. Robinson tells us that our freight estimates are good for about seven days. Seven calendar days is about it. Maybe 14, but that's it. So if you have a quote, which ours are typically good for 60 days, and it's been 45 days in, you know your quote price is still good, don't be afraid to call us up and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going in, we're rebidding this, but I wanted to make sure that the freight was still correct because we don't want to come to a situation where the freight has drastically increased or drastically decreased, and we could have taken advantage of that information. So now that we've worked up with freights, we'll move into our sample quote. This is what the customer or the representative would expect to see once we have a quote emailed to them. See the quote numbers right at the top, the firm that it's written to, uh, the individual at the firm it's written to, the date it was made, and the job it's for. The first thing we see in the body of the quote is fiberglass reinforced plastic ductwork. Right away that tells me that this is a Minoxavent fiberglass product and not a source capture product. The material tells us that this is underduct single wall. So if I wanted to know if it was double wall or single wall, it tells me right there. 
found on drawing sheets, M110 and M111. If we have the contract documents, we'll let you know what sheets we found ductwork on. This way, if you come back and say, well, I found some more of it on M201, this section already can tell you that maybe we didn't see it, maybe we didn't have the drawing sheet. Be sure to give us a call. We'll record it as quick as we can and get it out to you. Same thing with the units it's attached to, air handling unit one and two. So that tells me that, uh, oh, air handling unit two. I know that there was a change order that replaced all of the fiberglass with stainless steel. So I can go ahead and give Brian a call and say, hey, just so you know, I only need the duct on AHU1. Okay, I'll get that updated. Project location. This tells you where we think the project is going to. A lot of times we'll pull that from the customer or sometimes from uh, notes on a drawing sheet. Please make sure that's accurate as well because that lets you know where we're estimating the freight to. Applicable specifications tells you what section of the specs and it also tells you uh, if we're excluding any specs, it'll tell you if we're changing any specifications, or it'll tell you if the pricing has changed because of something in the specifications. In this case, no specifications were provided, so it tells you right there that we're quoting this per our standards. And if there's an engineer out there that wrote a spec or one comes up, this tells you we haven't seen it. Some miscellaneous notes, one of the most important of these, itemized lists shall be factory assembled up to 20 foot lengths. That tells me right there that my manifolding or factory assembly is included in my pricing. Sometimes a customer will want it, or maybe they want it a little bit cheaper to be competitive. Maybe they don't want the 20 foot lengths because it's in an existing building and it's too long to handle. This is telling you about how long your biggest pieces will be and whether or not it is factory assembled. And then we have some miscellaneous standards here from UL SMACTA that we reference and build our duct towards. Second half of the quote, we come to our scope. Even though this is listed in a parts and pieces, because of my notes on the previous section that said it shall be factory assembled, I know that these are not going to show up on site this way. We merely break it out because it's easier to describe 46 inch diameter, end cap, reducer, 90 degree tap, than it is to say, Factory assembled piece A1 will have one of these, three of these, two of these, four of these. This way everything is just itemized up and it's something that you can skim through the drawings quick and it's just another double check to make sure that we're on top of things. Here we have the field joints. The field joints are always broken out at the bottom. This tells you I'm going to have to do eight 46 inch joints and five 36 inch joints. Right there I know how much labor I'm going to have to do in the field in order to put this stuff together. And then, of course, a list of our standard exclusions. Here we have what the total price would be, the rep cost multiplier, which for fiberglass, the rep cost multiplier is always, as you see it here, it is always one. Your total price is going to be that the price we charge you for the ductwork. The line for the estimated freight and the total including the freight. That about wraps it up for our presentation today. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on you know, how we do our takeoffs, how our process works here. Uh, that way you can communicate either with your customers or if you're in the field installing it, you can have a good idea of how we do things, how to tell whether or not we've missed something, and what to expect before the fiberglass ductwork shows up on site. Thank you. That concludes today's webinar on FRP takeoff and terminology. Please contact our support team for design assistance, quoting, or any other requests. Please remember our website, fiberglass-duct.com, is home to a complete catalog and various other resources. This webinar and all previous webinars are on the Monoxament YouTube channel. These presentations are linked off of our website. Click the Dig Deeper tab and click Webinars. Webinars are held the last Friday of each month. In May, our topic will center on Monoxament source capture products. We realize you all have busy schedules. We genuinely appreciate the time you have spent with us. Thank you.